Acumatica 2021 R2 has a new field on the project screen called Inventory Tracking. And you have these two new options here on the top, Track by Project Quantity and Cost, or Track by Project Quantity. If you track by location, that's going to be the standard behavior that we had prior to 2021 R2. So I'm using Track by Project Quantity and Cost on this project. Um, now, I should point out that in order to use this, you have to enable the feature, which is this project specific inventory feature on the enable disable feature screen. And once you enable it, you need to go to the recalculate project balances screen and initialize stock. So once you do that, you can use this new feature. So I'm going to be doing tracking both the project quantity and the cost. And let's go ahead and do a purchase receipt. I'm going to save some time and bypass the purchase order. So let's just go directly to the purchase receipt. I'll use this Acer laptop item. And I'm going to put it in the receiving location. I'll do a receipt quantity of one. And I'm going to use this project on the receipt and I'll use a task of two. Then I'm going to control the unit cost and make it something wildly different from what the default wants to be. Let's make it $10,000. So I'll save that. Now, let me point out here that before I release that, if I refresh my balance report, you'll see that I have, let's see, it looks like it knows that I'm about to receive it, so I have zero on hand in this receiving location, but I do have one available because it's counting the PO receipt as available right now. But for my inventory valuation, I still just have this one line, which is this, let's take this here, my 77,250. And my 309. Let's divide these and we come up with an average cost of 250. Now let me take this item here and open it up. And I just want to take a look here that the valuation method is set to average. So when I use this item, I should be getting an average cost of 250. All right, so let's go ahead and complete our receipt by releasing it, and now I've brought that into inventory. So let's take a look at these reports again. Let's refresh this, and we'll see that we now have one on hand, this was zero before, and still one available. Our receipts goes down to zero. It would be interesting to see, maybe in the future, um, another category down here that, that shows us that something's allocated to a project, something like that. I think that'd be interesting. But uh, looks like that's what we've got for now. And then up here on inventory valuation, let's refresh this. Now this is interesting. Our original cost layer remained the same. This did not change. So I still have a $250 unit cost. And then down here, I've got a new uh, inventory layer and I think I'm getting that because I decided to track both the quantity and the cost. So that's interesting. It's tracking a layer that's specific for this project and it's not messing up my regular inventory layer, which I think is kind of nice. So even though we've released this receipt, we've received it into the wholesale warehouse, we received it into a bin location, you know, in practice, you'd probably want to make this a, a job location so you can separate it from your regular inventory but you know it's nice that it's it's kept the cost separate because i'm using this track project quantity and cost so that's kind of interesting and then i i wanted to also point out where it appears to me that it's tracking this so there's a now a new table in Acumatica 2021 R2 that did not exist prior. It's called PM Location Status. And you can see I'm just running this for this one inventory item and only if the quantity on hand is greater than zero. I grabbed a few columns here and 
here is that generic inquiry. So here's where you can see that Acumatic is tracking that I've got one that is specific to this, this project. I've got a quantity of one here. Um, all right, so then if we come to the issue screen and if I go down here, let's try to issue now this, that inventory item from that receiving location. Now, if we pull this receiving location up, you can see I only have the one and that one is allocated to the project. So I'm gonna try to issue that one. And you can also notice down here that it's telling me there's nothing available. Uh, but I'm still going to try to do it anyways. And let's set the pricing to zero because we don't need that. And I'm just going to try to do a general issue, not to a project. So we'll save that. And at first we get a warning. So it's telling me that the quantity on hand will go negative. Now for this particular item, if we go back and look at the item, you can see that this particular item, we are not allowing negative quantity. But the warning message is just a warning, not an error at this point, because it's not sure yet. It hasn't done that validation if it's going to allow negative or not. So I'm going to try to force it through. We'll remove the hold. We'll try to release it. And now here's where that extra validation comes in. I'm still balanced. It did not get released. And here I get a red error, not a yellow warning. And it's not going to let me to do this. So it's protected the inventory layer and it's not allowing me to do a general issue. But what if we try to do an issue to a project? So let's just pick a random project here, not the project that it's allocated to. Let's try this one. And you can see as soon as I selected it, it changed it back to an X. It's not letting me select that project. So, um, and I get this, you know, this is a new feature, so I guess this kind of weird error message, but at least it's protecting it. I have to use the project that it was received to. So if I do that, now it allows me to select a project. I can put my task in as well. And I'll check again. Let's try to change it to this. You see it changed it right back to my original project. So it's only going to allow me to issue this to the project that it was received for because I'm using this track pro uh, project quantity and cost. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, if we finish off this issue, let's go ahead and um, we should be able to release it now. So if I release this issue, we can come back to the valuation. Now this should have left inventory. So we did have a 77,000 and a 10,000. If I refresh this, that is now left inventory. And I've got 77,000 and zero cost here. Um, and then if I come back to my issues, and look at my journal entry that was created. You can see it did credit inventory for 10,000. Now, I haven't carried this all the way through, but I did think this was interesting. It's, um, I think this AR accrual account is just used because I did a standard issue. So I, I don't think I can take this any further, but I thought it was interesting that it did not put a project here. So even though this came from an issue that did have a project, the project did not make it onto the journal entry. Now I'm going to assume at this point that it's a bug. I'm on the first 2021 R2 build in my testing here, or maybe I'm missing something, but I'm going to assume at this point it's a bug. So you, know, you can see because it doesn't hit the project here, if I go to the project transactions and look at the most recent one, these are transactions I was doing earlier for AP bills. So I would expect that our most recent transaction should have a module of IN, but it does not. And so it's not landing on the cost budget. I don't have a, um, I was expecting it to land right here. I don't have a $10,000 actual cost on my project. So I think that's a hole, maybe a bug that needs to be fixed against the first build. So not super surprising there, but I think it is a cool feature that you can now use this option and you can receive inventory and have it allocated to a project. So we're still receiving it into a warehouse, but we're protecting it and not allowing it to be used by other projects on the issue screen. Mm -hmm.